everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have another one of our Hallmark writers with us. We love talking to the writers here on the podcast and I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and today we have writer Riley Weston is here with us uh, who recently did the, the uh, screenplay for a Good Morning Christmas and Riley, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I have to say, you know, in the, the music side of my life, it's uh, songwriters are usually um, just, well, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say equally as important, but, but the fans of country music especially, they love hearing about the stories behind the songs and how you came up with it and when and who you wrote it with. And, and it's funny because that doesn't usually get the same kind of feedback, doesn't kind of equal the same when it comes to the movie side of my life, which I'm just so excited to be on here talking to you guys about like scripts and, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm just, I'm, I'm honored and I'm excited that, that there are people out there that actually want to hear about the stories behind the scripts and the same kind of stuff like music. It's just awesome. Yeah. The very first interview we ever did on our podcast was with a writer. Oh uh, man, that with, makes me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> with Thank you guys for supporting writers. You know, there's a saying in the music industry and it says it all begins with a song. You know, you could hear a song a thousand times. It could be a huge number one song, uh -huh. you know, it could be 50 years old, but it had to start with a songwriter, right? So it's uh -huh. kind of cool. The same thing with the movie. It's got to start somewhere on the paper. So it's kind of cool. And I appreciate that. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, so, so you, so you are a songwriter and a screenwriter. I am. And, wow. I, yes. Yeah. So who have you written uh, songs for? The, um no. well me <laughs> me <laughs> so far me and my family no um so it's funny i started writing uh, movies because i started out as an actress and still uh -huh. love acting and hopefully this next year fingers crossed that i'll start getting back into doing more acting equally to the writing which will be that's the goal uh -huh. but <clears throat> i started out um writing movies um, the same way, just because I was sick and tired of certain scripts that were coming down and, you know, I'd read, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the same thing. And it's, you know, at that point too, I was playing like, you know, the, the angsty teen, that's like the quote unquote, like the angsty teen that is rolling her eyes and saying whatever and slamming a door. And I would just be like, well, why, why, why is she saying whatever? Why is she rolling her eyes? You can't, you can't just say because she's 19 or 18 or whatever years old, she's angsty because she's a teenager. Like there are 85 year old men that can be angsty if their wife of 65 years just passed away. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. I, I would always I try to try to be deeper. Like why, why are these people doing what they're doing? Why are they saying what they're saying? What is prompting and, and pushing them to like act a certain way? And so it, it really got to the point where I had, you know, some agents at, at that time who I'm um, no longer with um, because I'd go, well, you know, I'm not being difficult. I'm just asking why. When someone says, do you have any questions? If I say yes, they can't get mad at me. They asked me if I had a question. I have a question. But it did get to the beer where they're like, oh, God, here she goes again. And I'm like, well, well why? Like, if, and no one could answer that. So I thought, well, you know, I could at least stink that bad and maybe stink a little bit less than somebody who's writing me a script. And then, <laughs> which kind of opened up a whole nother world for me as a writer, which I'm so grateful for. And it's, that's kind of where it started. The same thing with the music. It's like, as a, as a singer, I would, I usually it's, it's a guy writing. There are yeah. some amazing women songwriters. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but you know, I just got sick of those, that kind of vibe. And I thought, well, yeah. let me just try to think a little bit less and maybe just, maybe I'll have a good vibe. So it's, um, it's an interesting world going back and forth, depending on what side I'm writing, because as a songwriter, you co-write, that's what everybody does. It's at least two people in the room. As a, as a screenwriter and as a TV writer, I write by myself. So it's, uh -huh. it's kind of a different, uh, whole different vibe, but yeah, I just got it. I became a writer out of frustration pretty much. That's the one line. If I could give you it's I was out of total frustration. <laughs> that's so, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, I love that, that you were able to channel that frustration into something so productive. Yeah. That's very good. Listen, um, I'm glad it worked out. Cause it, it could have been really, really ugly for my parents and, and, and friends to have to read like crappy stuff over and over again, <laughs> because I'd be like, <laughs> look at my next thing I just did. And they're like, Oh God, here she goes again. She's frustrated, but thankfully it, it worked out okay so far. <laughs> so you started out acting then. Yeah. Yes. And then, and then did you sort of do acting and singing at the same time? 
So yes and no. There was one movie I sang in um, that I, I was in as an actress and I also had a hand in rewriting it, which was pretty cool. And um, the late Tom Bosley was in that one and it's a Christmas movie. And it was, um, gosh, it was a fun movie called Christmas at Water's Edge. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on this year again, but it might be on Netflix or Amazon or something. Uh -huh. But it's uh, it was a fun movie. And um, of course, when I rewrote it, I'm like, well, all these kids in the halfway house should totally sing because I knew I was going to be in there. I was like, I'm not an idiot. I'm going to write myself a singing part. So it's um, the singing kind of always the singing and the acting was what I was kind of focused on more, more so the acting. And, uh -huh. you know, I lived in Los Angeles for a little bit of time and country music wasn't um, everyone's cup of tea, shall we say. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, it wasn't. Uh, uh, outwardly very popular at that time. So I kind of just focused on the um, acting and then the writing. And then I, it was one of those like forks in the road kind of moments in your life where you're like, I'm not happy and I have to do something about it right now. And I had also, my, um, my family was having a rough time. My sister had been diagnosed with breast cancer and I, and it's only my sister and myself. And I looked at that and I thought, I am not happy where I'm at in my life. And this was one of those 50, 50, percentages where it could have been uh -huh. me just easily. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm leaving Los Angeles. And then I just thought I'm just going to focus on music now and just yeah. uprooted everything. And, you know, it wasn't, um, it's funny. I had to do a little interview earlier today and, and we were talking, it was more on the songwriting music side of stuff too. And he was saying like, what was that like? And I said, well, I got to tell you, you know, there's a three day drive from Los Angeles to Nashville, Tennessee. And I, halfway through that, like, maybe like by the middle of the first day I was like this is awesome this is great I'm so excited look at what I'm look at me god I am doing such great yeah. stuff and you convinced me to do this and it's awesome and I'm following my gut and by day two I was like oh sweet baby Jesus what, <laughs> what in God's name have I done god why did you let me do this like holy crap like what if you know and it was like by day three i was like hyperventilating in the car like almost throwing up in the side of the road like oh my god my life is over so it was like <laughs> it was like all of those things wrapped up into one like to kind of it was a complete and total culture shock that said i kind of yeah. i grew up in a really really kind of hallmarky small town like the uh -huh. two traps, like, kind of a small town so for me coming to nashville was like home again that, you know, and I'm so glad mm -hmm. I made that move. So it was perfect. That but is freaky nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a story. That is it, a life. That's so exciting. It, I mean, but if you live that light, that kind of life where you're, you, I mean, I'm a Christian, so I say it's my God gut. And I always mm -hmm. like say like God kind of guides mm -hmm. whichever corner. And I just know, I know it sounds so silly unless you kind of live your life like that, which is just like, I know when I know just yeah. to do something or email somebody or call a certain person at a certain time. And it's that, that little God gut that I have let guide me through the craziest, most insane things that I have done where my family's like, you're doing what you are moving. What you're going to national do what? Like we know you sing, but what you can't just, move yeah. across. well, I'm doing it. I already got the rental truck and he's moving me across the country and I rented a house online. And my, I've never forget my mom's face. Like, you've got to be kidding me. I can't repeat what she said out loud, but it was, are you insane? It was like, well, maybe, but you know, and when <laughs> was this, this was like, like, uh, nine years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. But it worked out. Yeah. Okay. So, and you were in, that about every go you ahead. Were in, you were in sister act two. I was. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was one of the choir kids. Oh it was great. Gosh. I, it was such a, that was like my first big experience and it was, uh -huh surreal i guess was the word because you know it i mean whoopi goldberg hi and yeah. bill duke he's an insane director and he's so great and bill duke was a director and it's funny because now with social media especially i have found like we all kind of find each other again and be like hey oh my god look at what you've become and look at what you're doing and uh -huh. you know people that have had babies and gotten married and it's just it, yeah. it's I've, I had been extremely blessed. I, I, if I have once hour of a bad day and be cranky with myself about something silly, I, ha all I got to do is like, think back and go, I've done some really cool things that I, I never in a million years thought I would ever get to do. So, mm -hmm. and every day it gets to be bigger and better. And it's, it's funny. It's about, yeah. it's about that journey. It's about the journey and the unknown. You, you, you gotta be in it and not look at the outcome and the end result. That's, it's been a fun journey. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I actually had thought about that movie not too long ago because uh, 
I, I'm a film critic on Rotten Tomatoes and a bunch of uh, my fellow film critics, uh, we were kind of shocked to see how low the Rotten Tomatoes score was for it, for Sister Act 2. And so we kind of did this little, we did this little push for a bunch of us to watch it again and review it. And Holy so I, it was, it was only a couple of months ago that I published my review of no <laughs> way. Two. Yeah. <laughs> love Rotten Tomatoes. I love it. Well, you know what? Cause y'all say like it is and you say what you're feeling and that's, that's yeah. to be commended no matter what it says. Look, it's entertainment, right? So no matter what any, anything uh -huh. ever gets rated by Rotten Tomatoes site or by like, you know, New York film critic it, and uh -huh. anything in between, it's entertainment. We're, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, I it's, think it's, you can make an argument that it's better than the original. Yes. I really do. I absolutely agree with you. Mm -hmm. It was totally different and it was raw and funny. And honestly, a lot of it was like fly by the seat of our pants. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm not necessarily a dancer and I love that Lacey uh, Chabert just did a movie recently about, you yeah. know, the Christmas Waltz one. And, and it was uncomfortable. So like she said, she was out of her comfort zone and I love pushing myself out of the comfort zone. I will, I mean, it's not comfortable, which is the whole point. You know, it's like, I, um, yeah. I, I have a movie as an actress that I've been trying to make and also as the writer, I even written a book about it because I thought, well, if I have a book, then they'll let me control the rights more. I've written the theme song. I've recorded it. Like I'm ready to shoot this movie tomorrow, <laughs> but there's that thing called financing. But look, I started ice skating. The girl's an Olympic ice skater. I'm like, well, I'm just going to start ice skating a few years ago. So I like, came to Nashville. I started ice skating. It's like, <laughs> You know, you just, yeah. I, it's, it's push. It's, it's all like, it's whatever it's, it's entertainment. So yeah. whatever it is that it's, you know, take somebody on a little bit of a journey. If it gets a bad mm -hmm. review, so what did you have fun? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's what life's supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. Very, 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 very true. So you decided to start writing songs and yeah. you ended up with writing the nanny express. How did that happen? And the, <laughs> get the idea for writing this because it's my one of my favorite if not my favorite um, non-christmas hallmark movie i, I love the love express and i'm not just saying that because i'm interviewing you i i'd be real no I, I you know what this is great i can't take credit for the idea itself because they came to me and needed a rewrite um and I, from what i had been told i had been sitting on the shelf over at hallmark for a good like a lot of years at least a good three years or so and um i was approached by a, a, a production company and said hey are you interested and you know i thought well i mean and i hadn't written that much before then this was like my mm -hmm. first you know i'd done one thing for lifetime um that i and this well, is pretty got, early in the network this is pretty early in the network exactly yeah. i was like gosh i don't know i mean i could certainly try and i ended up you know rewriting the whole thing and it was a brand new script and uh only thing that really stayed was the title and um and hallmark loved it and and i mm -hmm. am so proud of that that movie i just i love the relationship between vanessa marcel's character and the girl mm -hmm. and that the diary and i just mm -hmm. i just and i love brendan elliott who doesn't yes. i mean come on he's just adorable and sweet and that it was just my first big um movie with hallmark to make me go you know this is something i even if i'm not acting in something i am I want to do this too. So that got me really excited about the future with Hallmark and stuff. How, and I did, just, how did they think to come to you to do a rewrite? Um, I, it was a company actually, um, this production company that I worked with, it was one of the executives at their production company who knew me as an actress, I believe. And also his wife had just read this book that I had written. That's the movie I'm still trying to make. And, um, his wife was up late reading one night and was I, apparently crying. And he was like, oh my God, who died? And she's like, oh my God, this book, you've got to meet the girl. And, and that's how it started. And he called yeah. me and asked for an interview and said, hey, we want you to write this. And I was like, wow. And it was like the first time too that I saw like how all of my little hyphens could maybe help each other and collide. Uh -huh. And also kind of gave me that little, the fire in my you know belly kind of thing to go, wait. So I can write something. I might be able to get the job as, I mean, I was, a, it was an author, which I'd never done before. And I don't ever see myself being again, at least not in the near future, but you never know. Mm -hmm. And it was like, because his wife read a book and was crying and he said, Oh wait, we need this emotional kind of piece to be rewritten. And, and it was like all these weird steps that kind of took me down this weird path. And then I did another movie with them with, for Hallmark uh, called always in forever. Mm -hmm. And, um, I love that one. Dee McDermott was great in that one. And Rena Sofer, who is stunning and awesome. 
And then there was another one with Hallmark that has yet to be produced. Um, you know, production companies and networks, they change regimes, like, you know, the heads the come in and they kind of don't want to do what the last group maybe um, kind of saw through development. They want all new projects mm -hmm. and that's kind of what happened, happened there. So we've got one that's on a uh, shelf. Well, I don't know if it'll ever get made, but it's one of my personal favorites. And then, uh, and then, and then good morning Christmas. So you had written a novel then? Yeah. So yeah. how did that, have, so, so how did you end up writing a novel? So, <laughs> I mean, it, this is, I, mean, I tell you, this, Rachel, I'm not even kidding. Like if I, I, I'm trying not to laugh and it's not funny because it's my life, which I guess makes it very funny <laughs> because every single time, like I get this weird, like, Hey, I'm going to go do that. Like I just do it. And I always go, if it, look, if, it, if I fail miserably, at least I tried. Right. I yeah. went down and played. But so the book came about because it's, it's, I, it's based on a script I had written and I have had it in development. I don't know, maybe like four, three or four times at this point, And then it would fall out of production and I'd get so frustrated. I'm like, I know this movie has to get made. And it's kind of like, Oh, the fault in my stars meets terms of endearment meets. What's the name uh, of know, the book? It's called before I go. Mm. And it is available on Kindle. If anybody gets it. Um, and it's, okay. it's just, and it's um, the screenplay, the characters are older, but it's, it's, it's still that kind of a, it's just that it's, it's that first love, but this happens to be when they're like, they meet when they're like nine and six uh -huh. at that very awkward stage where the boy, you know, as you see them grow up, you know, she's still a child at 12 and he's like a young man at 16. And, and it's kind of a cool thing. You see them like go through their lives and what happens. Um, like, and it's, it's that, it's the same kind of vibe that I try to live my life by every day, which is we don't know what's going to happen. So do not waste a moment. Do not waste a day. Do what you love, love what you do, say what you mean, mean what you say. And, and it's, it's so cliche, but it's so dang true. And I think we all kind of have felt that this year, but, um, yeah. okay, side note, but the book came because honestly, I thought I could control the script a little bit more if I had a book. And then the book went on to win a few awards, which was even funnier because my, you know, including me, like it wasn't my family laughing at me, but we we're all like, oh, this is gonna, like, this is just a book. Like who cares, my yeah. mom's gonna like it. You know, she'll cry, I'll make her day. Like it was so silly when she was like, when she finished it and she was sobbing, I'm like, mommy, you have to say that because you're my mom. She's like, no, it's so good. And then it ended up getting published. We are like, what, oh, come my. on. Like that's just stupid. So <laughs> that's. Like, Stupid. So you started out as an actress and then yep. you Probably. had a screenplay that you wrote and then yep. you wanted to promote the screenplay. So you wrote it as yep. a novel. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that covers it right there. And Rachel. then they were looking for a, uh, it's such kismet all this. So they, so weird. the producer was looking for someone to rewrite. And his wife had just happened to read the novel. Yep. Is that right? Is that the right chain of that's events? All, that's all kind of how it happened. And the, uh, ironically, the very first movie this production company had me um, do was a thriller. And when they called me in and they were like pitching it to me, I started laughing. I'm like, you do know what kind of book that she wrote, that read, right? Like, you know what kind yeah. of book I wrote? It's like, it's like Nicholas Sparks. It's not, yeah. um, you know, death becomes her. Like, it's not like I'm going to take a hatchet <laughs> knife to family of seven like yeah, with animals yeah. and stuff like this is this is like a uh, terms of endearment it's not yeah. i'm you know friday the 13th so <laughs> it was funny because when i got that first job i was like i don't know where they got this he's like well it's about your dialogue i'm like well um okay but i'm never wrote a thriller before so that was the very first one with them and then it went to nanny express which is kind of funny so it's it's been like again all those weird i i say like you know, God winking. I know Hallmark has movies like that, but I've been saying that a lot longer than the movies have been going on because it's, it's, if you, I just feel like I've yeah. kind of just nudged a certain direction to go, all right, let's see how this turns out. It mm -hmm. could be a colossal bomb and a big fat fail. And I'll get up and I'll laugh and say, well, I tried and there's that. So <laughs> yeah, that's um, great. I love that story. And the thing about the Nanny Express that I think is so impressive is that I actually am not a fan of like angsty teen movies yeah even ones no, that even my, ones that other people really admire and like i yeah like i don't love like i don't love yeah. uh, i can literally feel you cringing right now which is scary <laughs> you're so right <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I, the, like, <laughs> I totally get it i totally yeah get it. i just it, 
I, I wasn't, I don't, I mean, I, I had my moments for sure when I was a teenager, but I watched those movies and it just makes me feel bad. It makes me feel bad yes. for my mother and it makes me yes. want to apologize to my mother. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just, I don't know. I just don't enjoy them. And yeah. I can see that they're well made and well done. And, but yeah. I like more, if I'm going to watch a teenage movie, I prefer something like clueless or mean girls or something yes. like that that's what i totally. connect with more Absolutely. rather than something like the edge of 17 even though i, I yes. understand it's a good movie it yep. it it just i found it so unpleasant <laughs> to no, watch. I, agree. I totally get it i yeah. totally get it and so it's a tricky 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 genre it is it, a slippery slope on that one it really and, is and I you don't want that, you want to portray it realistically which is angsty teens are bitchy and they're not uh -huh. somewhat nice yeah. and they're cranky and it's hard to watch cranky for an hour and a half. And I think that, that, it, that the Nanny Express, it rides that line. It gets really close, but it succeeds for oh, me. And, thank you. Thank <laughs> um, you. That's and, a big, that's a huge compliment. I yeah, appreciate it. And I just, mm -hmm. I felt so like connected to her as to yeah. this teenager. And when she reads that diary, mm -hmm. Yeah. of Vanessa Marcel's character and feels connection to something in the world. I think that, that, that who can't relate to that? If like finally feeling yeah. like, Oh, somebody understands someone gets it. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think it has gone through literally yeah. walk that same road before me. And I, I loved it too. And I, I hoped so much that it would come across because you know, when she gets that diary, I believe it's like for her birthday and Vanessa Marcel's character gives it to her. And she's like, why yeah. would you give me this? Dude? Like, why would you give me that? That's the, like, that's the most ridiculous. Like, why would I have a used diary? Like she was so angry about it. I thought, okay, this is that one moment where it could have gone too far. But mm -hmm. then the payoff, I think I, I love that. And they, the actors were so great and everything about that movie, man, you know, it's, you never know once you turn it over as a writer, yeah. like you're out, you're done. Especially yeah. if you write it for a network, like I do most of the time, it's like my job's done. And I, it's funny, even this last one, you know, I was talking to one of my Hallmark execs and, and I turned it in and I said, listen, I will rewrite anything, any day that they're on the set. And she kind of laughed at Riley, once we turn this over, we, we just pray that it, it doesn't get changed. Like it, that it's exactly what it is. It never ends up being that because obviously, you know, there's different energies on the set and people have, you know, in the, in the moment as, and as an actress, I get that and totally understand like you're in the moment and you ad lib something and it's like, oh man, I never thought about that. That's awesome. But it's, it's a tough one. Once you're done writing, you just hand it over and you, you pray that the same kind of vibe and the same intent gets portrayed. Otherwise, it could have gone a whole other direction and you'd be saying, man, that was really awful, Riley. I hated it. <laughs> but but yeah. it's true. You know, it's, it could have gone either way. But it was just, it was really, they did a great job. Mm -hmm. They did. And I, I love the fact that the movie ends with them just going on a date. Will you go on a yeah. date with me instead of being yeah. like... We're going to be engaged. together for forever. Yeah. I think that's so cute. Oh. Uh -huh. And that's a lot of the, as you know, that's a lot of the, most of the movies kind of end with that, like end all be all. And I just love that vibe, which is like, they just need a date. They hadn't even uh -huh. gone on a date yet. You know, right. that's, that it was a perfect, um, and again, as a writer, you try to like say what you want to happen and then you know, the higher up it gets and the closer you get to production, the more eyes are on it, the more uh, cooks are in the kitchen, should I say. And, uh -huh. and you never know, like it could end up being a whole nother, uh, you just don't know. So it's, it's, um, it's definitely you, when something ends well and as you intended it to end or literally exactly like you intended it, it's not only a huge sigh of relief and like a, um, praise Jesus moment, but it kind of is like the choir's behind you're like, praise Jesus. Yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. That's how my head is happy, you know? Yeah. So you wrote the nanny express and yes. it had, had a good experience with it. And so yes. then you, did you just go right into writing another script or I think how did that pretty, happen? I think it was fairly soon after um, nanny Nanny went very fast. It was like, it, I rewrote it a few times. It was shot and they had it. And if I'm not mistaken, it did pretty great in the ratings. And I, so I think it was when, I think it was just within the production company. Um, another executive, executive had come to me and said, Hey, can you rewrite? I'm on this movie now. Um, and they had the idea. I think they had the rights to always in forever that song, the old song. And I think that's how they're like, we'll just come up with something based on that. And I was like, 
uh, like what? And they're like, I don't know, just come up with it. And before yeah. it was like, here's the script, can you rewrite it? So I had, you know, it was a nanny and there was bratty kids. That was about it. Um, but mm -hmm. this was like all basically me saying, uh, okay, let me just go think about what that would mean to me. So it was that one. It was fun. That was fun because it was like ground zero. Any thought I had, I could kind of throw it out there. Um, so it was pretty quick after Nanny Express. And uh -huh. then, um, and then it was back to lifetime for another naughty girl movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was calling the, the dirty bird movies. Um, <laughs> yeah, always and forever. So it, uh, is about two uh, high school sweethearts that yes. that get that have went their separate ways they get reunited yep. for a yeah. for a reunion yep. and yeah that one's really fun i it was i enjoyed that one yeah it was cute and i the, you know instead of just saying like oh i'm going to my hometown for the reunion i tried to go again every time i try to work with hallmark i try to make it just a little bit different than uh -huh. Than, than, than everything else, just because you want to try to make something a little bit more interesting. And I, I did it where she was already in the hometown and I had him coming back for a job that coincided with the reunion. And uh -huh. the cool thing is his company had hired her, but they didn't know it. She didn't know it was his company and he didn't know it was her that they hired. Oh, right. She yeah. was by her married name. So it was kind of like when they, when they first saw each other, it was like a weird thing that they couldn't believe it was each other because you know, it was so out of left field. So it was kind of neat that it wasn't just about the reunion. It was about them working with each other without even knowing up front that it was going to be that person. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a cute little reveal. And, and Barbara Eden from IG and Machini was in that. And that was pretty cool to see. Like, yeah, you know, I bet. Jeannie was like, that was pretty cool. My dad was very, <laughs> my dad speaking my words. <laughs> yeah, right. Like that was pretty cute. That was pretty fun. And they were awesome. And Dee McDermott was just, I mean, there are sometimes as a writer, Again, being an actress too, it's like, I know it sounds ridiculously uh, psychotic when I say this out loud, but it's as a, when I start writing, it's almost like I hear the voices in my head and they're uh -huh. all different and they sound different, but I, I can kind of like talk, I will write the script in my head as the uh -huh. actress who's writing it for another actor kind of a thing. But when I, you know, Dean McDermott, when I was writing his character, like I could just see him in the sarcasm and the funny like little quips that he had. Mm -hmm. And man, every single line he did, it was like, yes, he got it. Yes, he got it. It was just <laughs> like, you know, and that was cool. Same thing with this movie with, with um, you know, Allison Sweeney and Mark Lucas. It was the same kind of vibe. Like they just, they were so great and they took everything up a notch or two. It was just awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so then, so you have this movie yep. and, but then you didn't have a, a bunch uh, of other projects for a while. So is yes. that because you were doing music? music. Yeah, you know, that was the time when I had kind of focused more on like a lot of songwriting. I think the uh -huh. first few years I, I moved here, um, I wrote a ridiculous amount of, there were some days I was writing twice, three times a day. And um, just for, and your, it's, and it's, for yourself or for For myself, and also like you try to like get songs cut by a, a you know, a uh -huh. popular artist, which is, you know, and you know, you have people pitching your songs and it's, it's like the entertainment side in LA, but it's not, it's, it's an interesting kind of vibe. It's, it's, um it's a different vibe obviously for me because I have to co-write songs, but I write by myself when I write screenplays. And, but it's neat for me because I'm not a well-rounded songwriter. Like when I moved here, it, you know, I was, I was joking on another interview and I was like, well, no one knew I didn't even write songs before I came here. Like I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was writing songs in my head in LA thinking like, well, I know how it sounds in my head. And I took them to a producer and I sang them. He's like, where did you get these songs? Who wrote them? I said, I did. He's like, how? I said, I don't know. I just thought of, I just sang it for you. That's how. And he's like, yeah, but Riley, like, do you play an instrument? I'm like, no. He's like, okay, well then how'd you write it? I'm like, in my head. And the fun is like, look, God just told me what to write and sing. Like, that's it. Yeah. So, you know, I have a friend in LA that he was thankfully able to help me like get what it was out of my head onto, like, yeah. you know. A recording because and I had like five songs that I had when I moved to Nashville and when you move to Nashville usually it's like you have like you know a hundred songs you've co-written in the past for uh -huh. years and then you decide to make this move me I was like I've got five songs I'm ready to go like <laughs> I had no idea like what you were supposed to do but that's been my whole life like I didn't know I mean I grew up in a small town and moved to Los Angeles like I'll just be an actress how hard can it be and then I realized you know if I had known now what I know, what I knew, didn't know then, it was like, I had nothing to tell me no. Now yeah. I'd be like, I can't do that. You can never do that. But then it was like, well, no one said I couldn't. So why should? But the same yeah. thing with the, with the music. I just, I wrote so much. And 
Um, I'll be honest with you during that time on on a personal side, I actually uh, lost my sister to breast cancer. Um, so it was a lot of going back home where my, where she was home in Pennsylvania, where her house Mm -hmm. was and taking care of her two daughters who are now like grown up young ladies Mm -hmm. and are awesome human beings. And, but doing a lot of family stuff, Mm -hmm. um, for those few years, kind of focusing more on that and, and really trying to figure out um, how to have a new normal, which we're having all over again now. But for me, that was a big, um, it still is a daily basis. It's a daily struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, she was my only sibling. So it's, I've got three oh, great step. So um, it's so hard. I've got a, a stepsister and two stepbrothers who I love dearly, but it's, um, but my sister's my best friend. So it's, it's mm-hmm. been, there were a couple of few years where I didn't write too much and I didn't write movies at all. I could have cared less, honestly, about mm-hmm. everything. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, I started writing music again and performing a lot. So a lot of the times too, when I wasn't writing movies, I was focusing on performing. I got to open up for Lee Bryce. I got to open up mm. for Montgomery Gentry um, and both awesome, awesome. I mean, Montgomery Gentry was before um, they lost Troy in the terrible accident, but Lee Bryce, mm. I mean, it's like crazy stuff for somebody who a couple of years before that hadn't written a song. Like I, it, it's, it's been like, um, I feel like the more outrageously crazy you could be with your life and the mm-hmm. more chances you take, obviously the more, you know, obviously you can take a chance on getting hurt and it won't succeeding, but you also take a chance on crazy stuff happening too mm-hmm. and, and great interactions. And I've been very blessed to be able to play the bluebird an absurd amount of mm. times. Seven, I know if you know the bluebird in country music, you know how cool that is. Yeah. It's, um, I think my, I think my 30th show would have been in April when we had a cancel for COVID. So, and that still sadly hasn't been able to open back up because it's a very small venue and, and way mm-hmm. too close for people. Um, but it's, I, I mean, I've gotten to play some awesome shows with some ridiculously great songwriters and, and artists. And, and I, and now this year has kind of been like um, refocusing and reformatting life. So like we were talking earlier before we started um, recording about COVID and stuff and how, it's been such a strange year. I mean, I, I used to spend, you know, like once or twice a month, I'd have a big show. So a week before that, I'd really start practicing. I'm not, I am not a great guitar player. I'll tell you that right now. Like it is not pretty up front unless I practice. And even when I practice, still not great. I can get through playing my own songs barely. But um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so before a show, like I kind of, I kind of really hone in in that week before I really practice. But that's, now it's kind of like, I, I've, I've found a way to kind of, um, if I have to reformat my life from this year too, especially, but it's been kind of like, okay, I know my love writing TV movies. I don't just like walk the walk with Hallmark, like, or talk the talk. Like I walk it. I live it. My whole house has been decorated since November 1st. I have an outdoor winter wonderland that is be almost like equal to what Disneyland must look like right about now. I have a Santa mailbox for the kids to come and drop mail off. And in, you know, I'm sure there's not really young kids watch listening, but you know, I, Make sure that those letters are answered. If you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like with the little I mean, special candy. D- Disney I do- Disneyland isn't looking like much right now, unfortunately. No, no, I probably have it uh, for this year in particular. I probably have it up on Disneyland, but it's like the whole entire front yard is like you know white lights, red like a whole winter like a North Pole sign. Like it is done up. And if mm-hmm. anybody follows me on social media, they can go see the the stuff I had been posting. But it's ridiculous, and I I love it. I love giving people. Mm-hmm. something that came out of my head. And honestly, mm-hmm. this, this last movie came because I was, it was three years ago in December. And I, mm-hmm. I was thinking of a couple of different ideas, two of which are still on the table, which hopefully will get made in, in the mm-hmm. near future. But one of them was, you know, bright and merry. And mm-hmm. it, it kind of like, it was because I was over decorating my front yard. And I just started thinking, wouldn't it be great if we had these two hoes? Like, and, and that's how they all start coming to me when I'm, you know, and I'm like, Oh yeah, that's a good idea. And I'll write it down. And mm-hmm. I love taking that moment that pops into my head and then bringing it to somebody's life into millions of TV screens, hopefully that gives people a break, especially this year because Mm -hmm. of COVID. It's like, we all need to take like that break. And I would, and it's like to give people like an hour and a half of like to go away to fictitious town of mistletoe, Maine and like Uh forget about our lives of mask wearing, hand washing, sanitizing, (laughs) everything, disinfecting, you know, for God's sakes, like to have like Mm -hmm. a break. And and to give somebody some joy, like oh, that must it, it, it must have been a surreal experience for you to have written this movie about uh, about a young girl dealing with the death of her mother, and then yeah. na- then to 
just a few years later then help yeah. your nieces then yeah. deal with the death of their mother that must have been yeah. very surreal you know it, it it has been and um weirder yet the book before i go is my character actually comes and i'd written the book by the way before my sister was diagnosed mm -hmm. um um who comes against a very tragic um life story and a life event and and that the whole point of the you know her relationship with her mom is like she has spent her entire life on the ice like trying to you know do something as she says for only for her mother not for her which of course she comes to that realization it was for both of them and it was something she wanted to do but it's that life is very short and you know i look back on all that weird stuff i moments that i have written between any express and before i go and then my sister's diagnosed it it's a, a very strange correlation and you know i have I, there was a song i wrote um that if when i've gone back now it's it's kind of i go back and i think my god this is like you know it's a song that i i never would have thought of about my sister until after the fact and then you're like oh wow that was absolutely that was a weird thing in hindsight i can look back and go that was absolutely written for her even though i had no idea it was about to happen in the next year and um it's again it's one of those life things that i think if you really listen to that god no matter what business you're in or what your job is or what your passion is i think we're all kind of given those little nods or winks or kind of pushes to do or say something that we're like oh man i thought that but i didn't act on it you know and i mm -hmm. i feel like if more people would just act on those little vibes, of course, being it legal and not inappropriate <laughs> behavior, <laughs> but like, you know, it, like, I just think we're all a lot more um, intuitive than we, than we think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you had this family stuff, you were writing songs. Yeah. And so then what you said, you got the idea just kind of were you were you thinking okay i want to get back into screenwriting or did you just have the yeah. idea and you're like well i guess i need to get back into screenwriting no i mean yes and no i mean obviously financially you're like well music doesn't pay anything like movies do and so that was one thing but it was uh -huh. also i really missed it i miss telling stories uh -huh. and i love telling three minute stories in a song and i love getting up and performing them for people and i love you know people saying wow that really spoke to me and i have a military song that I, I love performing no matter what because i always know there's somebody out there in the audience it's like okay i have a son or a daughter or my father or my grandfather uh -huh. that somebody can relate to that and the same goes for like movies and i and i kind of got to that point where i had a lot of people saying like hey when are you gonna write another movie i really miss your writing and i thought yeah it's time and so about three years ago like i said i was decorating for christmas and um i i go to los angeles back like maybe once or twice a year to kind of go and have meetings with people and talk to different you know production companies and, mm -hmm. and the networks and stuff and and i was i was headed to go to los angeles like in a few months and i was like okay i've got to come up with some more ideas like all right god let me think here like what's mm -hmm. what what's going to be next on my agenda and and i was decorating and i i came up with a couple of different things and a couple of different titles and a couple of different vibes and i just started writing and once i started it was like i it was obsessive rachel there's yeah. only one way it was it becomes like <laughs> Once I start, like once flowed. that door opens, it, huh? it just flows. Yeah. And it, and so and by the way, that doesn't always happen. Like there have been many yeah. many days on Good Morning Christmas rewrites that I was saying bad words to myself <laughs> and pacing <laughs> and drinking way too much coffee and then saying more bad words and then possibly maybe also throwing things that wouldn't necessarily break, but also just made me feel better about throwing stuff on um, <laughs> myself or or at the or at the snowman that I have in my in my office. Pillows were oh, thrown. Oh, no, there and, were pillows. There were a lot of Kleenex. There was a lot of, um, oh yeah, which probably yeah, doesn't yeah. flow as well unless there's hard gum in there and I'd make sure that happened too. And then the dog gets it and it's a whole thing. But I, I literally would just be so frustrated. And you know, yeah. the funny thing is, you know, my mom, I always joke cause she's my biggest fan and she's also like mm -hmm. wants to be a momager so badly, but doesn't, <laughs> couldn't cause she's just like, she'll say way too many things that are inappropriate. And She'd be like, I have to sit down and write. Like, you have a deadline. You need to write. I'm like, lady, look, it doesn't happen until I'm ready. And it's so yeah. stupid because I, it could be like I have waited two weeks into a three, four week deadline and I have not written one word. But the day I say, okay, I'm ready and I sit down, I don't stop. And it, and it mm -hmm. becomes like it, my best friend lives with me in, in my house. And it, I'm, I've always warned her, I'm like, I'm going into the cave. And she's like, uh oh, okay, I'll be, I'll be here if you need me. And it's like anybody that's, uh, you know, that is, that knows me, I'm like, I'm going in. And once I say that, like, there have been days that I will not, I don't stop. There's no shower, there's no workout, there's no, I'll take the dog out to go to the bathroom and I will come in and go right back. I don't get dressed. I will eat whatever I can eat on a paper plate or while I'm walking up and down the hallway. 
it is, um, it's not pretty. It is not pretty. It does not smell good. It is not, it's not healthy. But what happens during that, that phase is like, I'm in that place where I can't describe it. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's interesting. The last rewrite I did for Good Morning Christmas happened over Labor Day. And, you know, we weren't shooting this movie until January of 21 because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we had done a lot of rewrites on like throughout, you know, the notes have come in, we redo it, more notes come in, you redo it again. And then, you know, last year they had a lot to deal with, with um, uh, an actress and a college thing that we won't discuss, but mm -hmm. um, you know, that had to get taken off a few movies and they were kind of focused on trying to revamp and redo. Oh. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, that thing. So a lot of money had to go into that and a lot of time. So we didn't, that, then it got pushed again. So then it was like, okay, then we get to this year, you know, this year and then COVID. I'm like, oh my God, this movie is never going to come out. And, and so in, I rewrote it again, I think in June, I turned it in. And then it was like, we were going to be, we're looking at first quarter of 21. And I was like, oh boy. So, you know, as that the financial side, Right. So you're waiting. You're like, Oh my God, no, not again. We get pushed again. But I was like, you know what? There's always the, the timing is always right. Like God knows I don't, I'm going to shut my big trap and whatever <laughs> happens, happens, whenever it gets comes out, it's going to be the perfect and right time. So I thought to myself, well, the positive is, you know, we're going to have real snowed. It's going to be awesome in Vancouver in January. There's this like awesome toboggan scene. That's going to be so great. They're going to be like knee high in the snow and it'll be great when they fall down together. Now, if you've seen the movie, you know, there's a scene now where they do the three-legged wreath race that I created. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that was the, that was my toboggan scene that never happened because we had no snow in September mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. But the last time I rewrote it was Labor Day weekend. And it was the notes that had come in from the director who's great, Paul Ziller and Tony Roman, one of the executive mm -hmm. producers and, and Allie and Mark, and everyone had their own personal notes, which is exactly what happens on a, on a movie like this. And so they came to me on Labor Day weekend. It was, it was Saturday afternoon. I had a big conference call with them. And I was with my stepsister and her family and my dad, who had just had, literally just had the week before a triple bypass and a valve replacement in uh -huh. New York City. So he was recuperating in upstate New York with, um, at their house, who was going to be there for two months recuperating. And I was staying with him to make sure he was good before I left again. And when I got the phone call from, I was like, y'all, I just got my dad out of the hospital. Like this is, and I said, how fast are we talking that we need this new rewrite? And I had just turned in the rewrite when my dad was in the hospital. I had done a rewrite. It was about a seven day rewrite then. So this was like the rewrite with everybody's notes. Again, I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I just finished it. And now we have another whole rewrite. And they said, well, how fast can you do it? And I'm like, well, how fast do you need it is the better question. You know, mm -hmm. I can write fast, but, and I'll never forget. I forget. It was like dead silence. It was like crickets. I'm like, um, did I lose everybody? And everyone's like, uh, no. And I think it was one of my Hallmark execs was like, um, Riley, we need it like, like, and then all of a sudden yesterday, one, like, yeah, <laughs> like, and said, okay, it's Labor Day weekend. Not that I'm having a party, obviously with COVID and my dad, obviously there was nothing going on, but I was like, that's two days away. I said, are you saying like, you need it like in 48 hours? And again, like crickets, I'm like, oh crap, man. So I started that night in my, and no one's ever witnessed this. Cause I'm always in my office, yeah. but I'm in a, I'm in my stepsister's house, which is this big, beautiful three-story home. And I literally, I looked at them. I said, what you're about to witness is never to be repeated. Okay. <laughs> you're not to talk about it. We're not discussing it, but I, and don't talk to me. Like I'm going to go into a place and I'm going to be talking to myself and you're going to hear different like characters in my head that are going to be, and it was like, yeah. you know, I couldn't sleep. Like I had a, I had a write literally nonstop all day, Saturday night into Sunday, all day, Sunday, Sunday night. And I didn't sleep. And I remember like, I promised it to them by 10 o'clock, um, uh, West Coast time on Monday on Labor Day, mm -hmm. and and I, my dad kept just sending me texts from upstairs where he was like he was like honey just check in with me I'm like daddy I'm fine just keep going I said you need anything he's like no just keep writing I'm like okay and my stepsister would come in she'd be so sweet she's like honey what can I get you to eat what can we make we've made a plate for you I'm like yep yep okay okay I'm okay and then I would change rooms because I would get like freaked out I'd go to a different room because I'm not used to writing there right yeah. I was in her basement I was in the living room I was in the dining room I was in the kitchen I was upstairs in my room I mean it was like. We joked when it came out and my, my brother-in-law wrote me and he's like, well, I feel like we should, we kind of were a part of this with you. And I'm wondering if we get any kind of credit for the house. I'm like, shut your face, man. <laughs> shut your face. <laughs> like it was, I mean, I moved around that house. I was in every room in those 48 hours. It was, it was scary, but I tell you what, they were shooting like two days later. So that is an amazing story. It, I mean, they, crazy. Say, they I mean. say in writing that you're either a pantser or a plotter. And that's obviously an example of where meaning you 
you you come off the seat of your pants, your pantser, uh, or yeah. do you have to have it all sort of planned out and plotted? Would you say that in general, like you are a pantser, like you just kind of pantser, go with your gut? Sure. And, and so gut, gut instinct. Yeah. I, here's funny is I've never taken a writing class, Rachel. So I don't, I'm, I wasn't brought up like saying, I didn't go to school where they said, okay, you have to map it out. You take mm-hmm. their three by five cards and storyboard the whole thing. I didn't even know what that meant when to start writing. Like I had no clue. So when I, um, when I do, I mean, I have the treatment that I, I turned into Hallmark before I, they go, give me the go ahead on the script. But when I first started writing, I mean, I just, I just have the treatment and even it always changes because then you have a new thought or a new character pops in your head or a new scene that you weren't thinking about in the treatment. Cause that's just the broad example of, of the idea. And this one in particular, I think it was probably like, um, two different polishes, which is just like a quick pass of the script again. And and at that point, we went through a big overhaul. And that was just my, my Hallmark execs and, and myself. And I, at the, for the first time ever in writing any script for feature or television, I got out three by five cards. Uh-huh. And I wrote down like how everything had to change. And I mapped the whole thing out and actually took my little thumbtacks and rearranged different scenes and put uh-huh. them in different places. And that was the first and only time so far that I've ever like had to plot it out. But, and then I went back to doing it by the pants again, which uh-huh. is... Really I mean, good. I just feel like I mean, it's, it's perfect because the movie is all about their differences yes. between spontaneity and preparation yes. and, and, and finding that kind of happy medium at the end where yep. it's both prepared and spont- <laughs> spontaneous yes. at the same time. I, just, I think I have a line in there that Ali says where it's like, I, I don't mind being spontaneous. I just want, want to, I just want to be prepared for it or yeah. I don't mind surprises, but I just want to be, I just want to know they're coming. And that's exactly, that's me. Yeah. I'm a Virgo. So I want to know, like, I want I want the surprise to be planned out. Like yeah. in my head, like I need to know how you're surprising me, please. Like I once we, you know, let's just get this straight. How are you surprising me and when, and then I'm good. You don't have to tell uh-huh. me anything else after that, but you know, just give me all the details and then I'm good, you know? And that's absolutely it's funny because I like things to be compl- like my life. I try to, like I have, I write down, I will not use my phone for that. You know, I have different like uh-huh. interviews and stuff I have in my phone, but like I need to write down on a piece of paper, what has to happen that day. And even if I've done something already, I will still write it down just to cross off the thing on the list. Like I am very methodical, like mm-hmm. Ali's character. But that said, when I write, it's like, it all comes out of my, it's all I'm pants in it, man. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm coming mm-hmm. up with stuff that, I, it's just that little inspired God gut because mm-hmm. I have no idea what I'm about to say before I say it. Because I am a big planner as far as is in my life. Like I, yeah. I, I don't do very well if people are like, let's just go spontaneous. You know, like no, no. I'm not a spontaneous, like I like to have a planned out. What are we going to do? Yeah. And, 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 yes. and especially my interviews, I like to have, you know, I like to be prepared as much as possible at least. Right. And, right. Uh, and so I don't know. I, I really related to that part of this film. And I also, I, I thought that the movie did a really good job with certain like expected scenes, but doing them in yeah. a slightly different way. Like I, yes, thank you. You were talking about the three legged race. The fact that they have the movie fall, which can be really yeah. cringy, but I still usually kind of love it. Cause I think it's hilarious. Let me tell you, can and, I tell you something, Rachel, <laughs> about that scene, how it was written. Uh-huh. was them doing this three-legged wreath race, yeah. but them getting lost on the trail so that oh. they were by themselves because they did not follow. They got so far behind and they didn't follow the, the path. And so when that fall came, they weren't around anybody else. Nobody saw them. And that's when they had this, this conversation. Again, yeah. that's where as a writer, I'm out. The director can direct it however he wants to. Yeah. And I'm, I have no way of saying, but my version of it was they were in the middle of absolute nowhere they had no idea where they were. It was getting to be a little dark. Uh-huh. And that's when they fell. And they were, and she was like, we have to go this way. And he's like, we have to go that way. And that's what caused them to fall. But I liked and, it. I it was funny. It was great. But I loved how it came out too. But it's the same thing. Like, like okay, the three-legged race. We've all seen that. But a wreath around it, I was like, okay, that changes mm-hmm. it just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they're having this weird, awkward conversation yeah. because there's a wreath around them. They can't freaking move. Like, that makes it a little bit different than the staple yeah. Certain scenes that, as you know, with Hallmark, you have to have those specific moments. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to have those scenes. And, and, uh, and honestly, there's very few things that you can do, like the ice skating. I'm like, well, if they have to skate, man, I'm going to make them wear Kentucky Derby kind of hats that are homemade. Like, then mm-hmm. it's going to be, then that's mm-hmm. a little bit something different. 
we can do these scenes, but how can I change it to make it something that, that Hallmarkies haven't seen before? Did you feel like it was a radically different experience writing in 2020 versus writing in 2009 for the network? Um, yes and no. And I'll tell you why. Because it's Hallmark, their main goal is to give people an, uh, uh, an hour and 40 minutes or an hour and 36 minutes of airtime uh -huh. that takes people on a vacation out of their lives. Uh -huh. um, given with COVID, even now, we, I think we need it more than ever. Uh -huh. but, um, but their goal has always been from the very beginning to give family-friendly, um, you know, good-valued family entertainment. And, and to give people like a magical, especially on Christmas, that magical vibe, yeah. you know? And I think that, in that part, it's the same. Um, writing <laughs> COVID and doing the rewrites, you know, there are some things that um, you'll appreciate now, like this scene where they get to mistletoe. Um, there, it was written that there was, it was the streets were packed. Well, with COVID, y'all can't have packed streets. Now can yeah, so right. One was spread out and there was about nine people there to greet them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, oh crap, COVID, COVID, God dang it, COVID. Um, but that was like, there was a lot of moments where I was like, oh crap, uh -huh. you know, I forgot, you know, the, the bakery scene, there was, that was, uh, the bakery was supposed to be full and there was all these other different um, people that were also, you know, in that whole um, contest, in the gingerbread contest. So, it, you know, it was different that way. I didn't have to write specifically, specifically for it, but the shooting of it sure, you know, the outcome mm -hmm. sure came out different, you know, well, and that's the just... The other scene that I really liked that you've seen a lot of these movies is the cookie baking scene because it it wasn't just sort of there as a filler for right. like insert Christmas here. It actually yeah. had a, an important role in the story because yeah. he was preparing a this experience for her. Yeah. And so in the end, he was supposedly so this is spontaneous. That, Thank and, you. That's yeah, no, okay. he had definitely, no yeah, he'd set it all up. He'd planned it. He'd prepared it. Yeah. And so it was such, it was an, it was an important moment in the story, I think. Yeah. For his character, especially just because yep. like he called her sister. He found, you know, he remembered yes. stuff. Remembered, you know, that first scene where she talks about wanting the, the carriage ride and, and light, snow lightly falling and, you know, having the perfect date. And he remembered that even though he acts like he didn't like, and he remembered that she was joking about Christmas Eve, even that her sister and her have this tradition and he realizes that she's not going to be there. And he goes out of his mm -hmm. way to do something very Christmassy, but also very personal and special, which is so had, hadn't been up until that point, his character at all, which was, I thought was a cool thing. So um, that's my dog barking. Sorry about that. That's okay. Joe Bob, come. And um, <laughs> so that was kind of like a, a cool moment for them to, and for her to kind of see him change. And I, I, I just love that uh -huh. about, um, I t like I said, I tried to take things that you've seen before that Hallmark um, viewers have seen before and make a tweak. Like the Saint yep. Nick's Gate, there was a reason. People brought presents, you know? Um, mm -hmm. there, was, there, was a, there was a wrapping, a wrapping of, of all those toys that they collected at Saint Nick's Gate that, we don't, mm -hmm. that was cut out because of time. I appreciated that, I really did. And I just really enjoyed the film. I mean, I, you were so fortunate to have Allison and Mark, they oh, I they, they I picked the I picked the big straw on that one. Yeah. I was so lucky. They I did. Previously I been out. together in the Irresistible Blueberry Farm and were so great. And yes. so it was so fun for us to see them again. And they I thought they did chemistry. such a good job. And oh, they, their chemistry is amazing. Yeah, and I the production was so good. I I mean, just I thought they did an incredible job of making everything like so Christmassy. It was probably it was so the best we've seen so far, as far as just like everything looked so good. I agree with you. The production, the the set designers, and yeah. honestly, I'm one of those writers that is probably way too descriptive, which could go to a fault because then you know. Mm -hmm. obviously between the network myself and anybody that reads it you're like that can't ever happen yeah they did it like i literally described their hotel rooms and mm -hmm. i'm i mean i have my room i don't have a fireplace in my room but i have a christmas tree in my room everything everything there's not one picture in my entire house which is a decent size house not one picture remains that is not about christmas or santa so it is like it, when the Christmas house storyline came out and i saw that i'm like oh sweet baby jesus they they, they must have gotten this from my house yeah. because I mean, obviously I keep my furniture and stuff, but I laugh so hard because I'm like, that's about where I'm going. That's my next step is taking out all my furniture <laughs> because I do that in every single room. So it was so cool that 
for, you know, to see like, I mean, I was like, there's a fire blazing in her hotel room. There's the Christmas trees and everything's decked out and she's got Christmas pajamas. And yeah. they, as big as my dreams were for the set, they out, I mean, by like a billion, they like, they took it to a whole nother level. I just can't, yeah. I, I mean, the barn, I, how I did the barn, like they had the trees in there. I was like, this is just magical. It's just mm -hmm. magical. They did yeah. such a great job. And I also like the fact that this year in general on the network, we're seeing a lot of, uh, of where the co-lead is as strong as the female lead and yes. the, so the male lead. And I, I really like that. And I felt like this was a, a really good example of that. Like he was a dynamic character that grew yes. and changed and, uh, and, you know, wasn't just kind of, insert person here you know kind of thing mm -hmm. that you get in some of these which is can be fine yeah. um but uh but i thought they were great and they were great together i really enjoyed it so congratulations on the movie thank I you think so it was really much fun. it yeah. was so much listen I, I somebody asked me a couple of days ago on on something and they said well what if you had a dream and i was like if i could work on a hallmark movies christmas movies specifically but any hallmark for the rest of my life like yeah. i'd die happy well, like i i just don't wait another decade <laughs> i promise promise, I won't. promise? Well, yes I, hopefully i do promise it's funny we already have um i they have two ideas that that i'm waiting to hear from one's a winter fest one and one is another yes. christmas one that yes. has never been done before this christmas one and i am really 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 hoping that that is the next one and and then there are ones that i'm you know there are there's always like other networks that we shall not uh -huh. name um, <laughs> that also do christmas movies yeah and um, yeah. yeah so i have a couple other there that that are um ones that I think Hallmark probably would have made a year or two ago, but they're really trying to be, get out of that box. And they're trying to be, um, obviously uh -huh. diversify more as uh -huh. you've noticed this year, but also do like completely out of the box and not have, not their staple girl meets boy, girls in uh -huh. hometown, boys in hometown, girl goes back, meets boy, you know, uh -huh. and, and, and that you see a lot on other networks and, and not to say that Hallmark doesn't have those, they do, but they're, they're really trying to, to up the ante a little mm -hmm. bit. And I think they're, they're showing that this year. So, and one of these is is completely and totally out of the box. And I'm really, really hoping that's the next Christmas one we do. But yeah. listen, if they came to me and asked me to do anything, I'm in. I don't care yeah. if it's for Groundhog Day series that they're going to do. I mean, yeah. not that they <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care what season they're wanting to celebrate or what season uh -huh. they're in. Like, they know I am in. I am I am probably one of their, their super fans, too. So, I mean, I don't just write them. I watch them. I, you know, I always have an answer. I usually end up saying lines as they come up, which is not fun to write, watch movies with me sometimes. But um, <laughs> I, and I'm sure you do the same thing. You brought them all too. You get it. But no, I just it just reminded me, you saying that reminded me of a friend I had in college and she was the worst to watch movies with because she would just be asking questions the whole oh, time. No. And making comments and we're like just let the movie play out like yes. don't yes. don't tell me. that's me <laughs> i remember I mean, honestly, watching a uh, dead poet society with her yes. And, but, yes she's like why is he going outside what is he doing there and i'm like ah you're <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That is me. I am rewriting it. Like I forget, there was one one movie that recently aired, and I had an issue with it. And uh -huh. I was like, it just didn't make sense. And it was a Christmas one, and it was a lot of money went into it. It was a beautiful out of the country kind of vibe. And I'm like, come on now, this didn't make sense. And it was, and I literally looked at my best friend. And she's like, give me the eye roll. Like, please don't say it. I'm like, just listen to me. Listen to me. It's, it's one line. One line would have fixed it. Just one line that says, let me do this for you. As opposed to her friend saying, oh my God, please do this for me. Which didn't make sense. I'm like, well, if she just said to her friend, like, <laughs> I'll do this for you. Let me do this and I'll make yeah. it work. And even though I'm incredibly busy out of the country doing this amazing thing that's never been done before and I'm on the cover of this newspaper, I will I still yeah. do it for you. Then I, then I said, then it would have worked, right? Then we would have bought into this movie. And my friend's like, yeah. I hate you right now. I can't watch the rest of this movie now. But, well, every I said, because I'm right. Because I'm totally right. She's like, I know, but this is like, that's why I can't watch it with you at the So well, I mean, every, every movie time. has plot con contrivances. Every movie has plot holes. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and so you, you have to kind of, but when you're watching a movie, you kind of at least have to give the movie a chance to let it tell its story as opposed to my friend in college who's just like asking yeah. all these questions you're like just let oh, the movie awful. tell its story and then it, once you're finished if you're still like that didn't make sense 
then that's yes. fine and we can talk about it but i just like, yes. stop but talking hard. you're driving Are me crazy you, do you go through that when like when you're watching so many hallmark movies do you, do you find yourself going like oh man i know they're gonna do this or that's gonna happen like well, in the back of your head only like, in bad movies <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, that makes that interesting. Only okay. in bad in in bad yes. movies, then those things get annoying. If I'm swept up you. in it, that, if I'm then you don't if matter. I'm involved, right. if I matter. like the characters, then yes. those kind of plot conferences are are distracting and gotcha. bothersome. And That's uh, good. that that makes sense. Yeah, and <laughs> it's kind of I, I I I think it was uh, Emma Thompson. I think they said you only notice the craft services table in the shot in a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> that, like that's so true because that otherwise is I've never heard that before but that yeah. is absolutely the truth it's totally the truth that's hysterical because it's, it's only in in the movies that you're not kind of swept up in that you're not involved in that you start to yeah. be like wait a minute what was that why did they do yeah. that or yeah. and, and you're totally right no you're yeah. absolutely right and and that's why a lot of times if i am reviewing a film i like to review it right away right when i yes. come back because oh yeah sometimes it's actually detrimental to the film if i have too much sure. time to kind of think about it well then you're gonna and, overstart you're gonna overthink yeah it. and if and a planner it, it's like you are it's like you start and going, i and i can let i don't want to let other people's opinions uh, impact my yeah. opinion so it, you know i gotta i it's it's usually very helpful if I can just get it out right away get it after out before I've seen anybody it. talks to you about it. You're mm -hmm. totally right. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, that's but, that's totally true. But anyway, it's that's that's really that's really interesting. And that's but hysterical. I, I really enjoyed the film and I'm excited to see what you do next. You'll definitely have to come back next time. Oh, I would love it. And, I would love it. Yeah. And I we will have to have you back. We can talk uh we could maybe talk about country music a little bit more because I have so, oh. I, so much to say about that as well. And that would be fun to well, do. Like I will, uh, we could we could watch like pure country or some you know some movie like that. There we go. Yeah, and, that'd be and, fun. Listen, yeah. I'm trying one another idea I have that I'm hopefully going to work uh, be talking to some some people about is a, a country music uh, Christmas movie for Hallmark or something. Oh, so yes, it's based on one of the song my christmas song that i have out so i'm hoping it um hopefully we'll be hearing it on yeah. sirius xm soon so well that I'm would be great the because yeah. they they have all these connections with yes because they did nashville christmas carol i know mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm it's a it's three generation of, of country women and um i'm mm -hmm. playing the the daughter of like a huge superstar country lady so i'm i'm that hopefully gonna fun. be talking to some some really amazing superstar uh ladies and seeing uh how they feel about um you know yeah. playing my mom and doing some singing Sweet. so uh well I know. keep us posted and I thank sure you will. so much for coming on the podcast this was a really fun to talk to you and it was so great talking to you too rachel it was uh, so awesome Thanks for having me what's your you, you have social media that you'd like to share if people want to follow yes. you yes I have got like, well, you can find me on my website, which is just rileyweston.com. And I'm on um, Instagram, Twitter, and as like Riley underscore Weston. It's R I L E Y underscore W E S T O N. And then yeah. I'm on Facebook. It's, I think it's Riley Weston fan page is one of them. And then other one, you know, you can friend me on that other page. And um, where else am I? Instagram, Twitter, uh -huh. Facebook. I think that's it. Isn't that awesome. all that we have? <laughs> Uh, that's good i'll put all of that in the description people can <laughs> check it out and that. yes thank you again for coming i really appreciate it and make sure if you're listening that you are following the podcast the hallmarkies pod and hallmarkies podcast all over social media and yeah. you can find me at rachel's reviews all over social media itunes youtube and on rotten tomatoes if you're listening to the podcast on itunes please leave your ratings and reviews that really helps us and yes. if you are listening on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we have our patron group and merch store. So check all of that out. And thank you so much, Riley. This was a really fun interview. Yes. I, I really hey, enjoyed it. I have loved this with you, Rachel. Thank you so much. And if any of your listeners um, want a free Christmas song, all they have to do Ooh. is find me on social media and I will send the new Christmas song. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll have all that information in the description check that out Perfect. that sounds really great well have a very very merry christmas to you and your family you have a merry christmas and rachel and thank you
so yeah. much. We will be in touch. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye. Bye.